I apologize that I'm going to have to speak and run. I have to be up in Baltimore in about 45 minutes. Um, and welcome, Delegate Aisha Brave Boy. Maybe you can come and take my seat as I leave to join the panel to, to answer questions. And a big part of congratulations for Kate Planko Wainwright finally getting rid of the interim in her title, the full time executive director of the organization for so long and we all knew that that interim was just temporary. Uh, congratulations and what well, we've been giving kudos to um, the entire county. I look around this room and I see people from Ellicott City and Columbia and Greenbelt. I mean we've got Howard County and Prince George's and Montgomery County in the room. A real this, this organization started as a seed in, in Montgomery County, but has become a magnet for progressives throughout the region. And so big congratulations for all the hard work that the organizers of this uh, amazing group have done to uh, grow uh, the influence of our work. I'm just going to touch on three quick issues that I know we're going to hit on uh, over the course of this session. The, the first is on death penalty repeal. Um, how many know that on the day that we signed that bill into law this week, Rome lit up the Coliseum in honor of the Army? Oh, wow. um, it, it, it's very true. Um, Sister Helen Prejean, who wrote the book Dead Man Walking, and a movie with Susan Sarandon and Sean Penn that, uh, that portrayed that film, um, is the nation's preeminent supporter of uh, death penalty repeal and has counseled death row inmates for a number of years. And she very, um, put a lot of sweat equity into our work here in Maryland. Um, she came up uh, this session and spent time, uh, we were walking the halls, Jamie delivering some cop signed copies of her book to some of your undecided colleagues, uh, twisting arms in only the way Sister Helen could, and having the important conversation about why it was so necessary for us to repeal the death penalty, the bias that exists in our criminal justice system, how we need to stand for punishment but not for vengeance, and how we needed to uh, become the 18th state to do this, and promising all the way that she would get Rome to light up the Coliseum in our honor, and she uh, called to say that they had fulfilled that promise uh, this week when, when that bill was signed into law. But our work isn't done. On death penalty repeal, uh, we could not impact with legislation that, that is prospective in nature. We couldn't address the five death row inmates that are sitting on death row in Maryland right now. And so we have our work cut out for us in two ways. Much in the same way that we had to win twice on marriage equality and on the DREAM Act. And a big congratulations to everyone who worked so hard here in this room to make sure that we won those important ballot victories in 2012. We are potentially going to be facing the same thing and having to defend this victory on the ballot next uh, November. And in order to get those five death row inmates um, off of death row, we're going to have to encourage the governor to commute those sentences to life in prison without parole. So we very much would encourage uh, the progressives in this room to get engaged because our work there is not done. On fracking, um, we got one and a half million dollars in the governor's budget this session to finally be a down payment for our studies on trying to make sure that we are the state, uh, any state that sits on shale gas rock, other, uh, and I say that sits on shale gas rock, I should start by saying kudos to for Vermont for banning fracking, but they don't sit on any shale gas rock. Uh, they, are, they, are, are progressive, uh, they are progressive in spirit and they've got our back, but they don't, the question of drilling doesn't, isn't really a question in Vermont. But Maryland, which does sit on shale gas rock out in, in western Maryland, has charted a better course than any other state that sits on shale gas because we're not drilling first and asking questions later. We're saying that we need to have a robust, independent, scientific review to determine what the health impacts are, what the uh, environmental impacts are, what the potential impact to the state's number two tourism economy would be. We have to have all of these questions answered before making a decision on whether or not there should be a drill in Maryland. Up till now, we've had a governor's commission in place that I sit on. We meet in Garrett County uh, once a month. I'm actually heading up there tomorrow. Um, we've been meeting bi-weekly uh, as our work has picked up. Uh, but we haven't been funded at the level that we needed to be funded to actually conduct these safety reviews. So this $1.5 million is a good down payment. 
but we can't say that after that money has been invested and spent and those studies completed that all of the analysis is done. Our commission has recommended at least $4 million in safety studies and climate change impacts and, and an ability to really dig down and understand what the impact of this would be. So we're going to uh, continue to collectively hold the industry accountable in our state to push for the full funding that we need for these safety studies and then to try to make sure that we have a period of time where we can review these safety studies because we're going to have some big decisions on our hands here and we need time to review these studies to determine have all the questions been answered or do we need to um, extend the moratorium. Have they been answered and they figured out, you know what, there is a way to do this without all of these negative consequences. You don't have to have flammable tap water and earthquakes and livestock falling over dead because they're licking the chemical toxic spills in their communities if, if it's done a different way. If we figure that that can be done a different way, though, we're certainly going to have to update our regulatory environment to have strict oversight for that. Or we might determine that it can't be done safely at all and we should ban it. In which case, all of those are going to take time, and about 18 months uh, is what we are recommending um, would, it would take for us to be able to absorb the full uh, impact of the studies to make a final determination on whether or not we do want to move forward or whether or not we want to say that we're done. Finally, on uh, issue of workers' rights and economy, we don't have to be at odds on these issues. Unfortunately, we came up short this session on, in, on increasing the minimum wage and on having paid sick days legislation passed. We made progress, but where we run into a wall often is this theory that somehow winners, you can't have workers be winners and employers be the winners too. We just have to change that conversation, right? How can we uh, bring something to the table that would allow the small businesses to be winners as well? Well, I know many in this room have advocated for closing the combined reporting loophole that allows uh, way too many companies in this state to not pay a penny in our state corporate taxes. Um, and we have often failed at trying to close that loophole because the, the business community comes in and says, this is, this is anti-business. It's one more way that Maryland is not being uh, helpful to the business climate. Well, we can change that conversation and say, no, businesses, you are going to pay your fair share, but we're going to keep that money for small businesses. We're going to devote the maybe $200 million a year that we can get from closing that loophole and put it into a small business reserve so that there is revenue to give tax breaks to our small businesses. We can help our small businesses. We can help our employees and our, our workers. And I appreciate and see that you are saying stop now. <laughs> Um, but it just takes closing, the, uh, changing the conversation in Annapolis, and that's what everyone sitting in this room is dedicated to. Thank you for electing these colleagues of mine who uh, we go to work every day, every year, to advance the, pri the progressive priorities of this state, and we're changing conversations every session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, everybody's going to have a chance to ask.